اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم سبحان رب کرب العزت ام یاسفون و سلام علی المرسلین الحمد للہ رب العالمین رب یسر ولا تو اثر و تم من بالخیر رب شرا علی صدری و یسر لی عمری وعلى الوقتة من لساني يافقه وقولي صدق الله للي العظيم Well, starting this chapter about the chemotherapy Decades back, this chemotherapy it was specific to the treatment of cancer Later on now a number of other medicines like the antibiotics they are now included in that in addition to the previous one so among the antibiotics the antibiotics in past they were known as those substances which work against pathogenic microorganism and they are were obtained from the living uh, from the living fungi over here and they were known as antibiotics but later on say 20 years back even a number of other drugs which were not obtained so, from fungi like they are also included in the antibiotics like the uh, metronidazole, well-known drug, you may be familiar with that, metronidazole, and the sulforamides, they are synthesized. While the previous drugs in past, they were uh, natural. So part of that antibiotics we will discuss over here, a detail about the antibiotics it has been given by our dean sir mashallah very beautifully a number of uh, general aspects they are given in their two lectures and if you go through those two lectures that will be the baseline and inshallah you will have good marks in your exams so Part of that is signed to me about it is, is uh, the penicillins. Before going to the penicillins, few words I would like to say over here. The, there are certain basic principles of treatment. One thing, all the infections, they don't need antibiotics. You know a number of minor infections are there and they are self-limiting. So unnecessary administration of antibiotics, what has happened? Uh, it resulted in that resistant, which is a big problem at present, resistant. Then among the basic principles of this, this antibiotic therapy or the chemotherapy, if there is some acute case, so you have to take sample, different sample like urine sample, blood sample, sputum sample first, and then start the treatment. And what treatment will you start without getting the report? And that is the, that's your empiric approach, not done. Empiric, hope your copies are there and pen is there empiric approach you know there is another approach rational approach so here is your approach which is based on your experience you will start the i mean what is the what may be the so, causative organism and what drug will be more effective over here then those samples be given for culture and sensitivity and that takes time 
Next thing about the general principles about the antibiotic therapy, which is written, although not practiced now, a single drug be given in spite of combinations. Well, now a number of combinations they are given together. Single drug be given in spite of combinations. Then the next <coughs> principle, the narrow spectrum drugs be given in high doses. Here you see, you have to see the susceptibility. I mean, if there are no adverse effects, I'll tell you later on, say in case of penicillin, there may be simple allergy or there may be even anaphylactic shock with that. You have already been told in, in the initial lectures. Narrow spectrum drugs be given in high doses. If there are no indi contraindication, the narrow spectrum drugs be given in high doses. And other basic principle, hope you are noting it on. The bactericidal drugs are preferred over the bacteriostatic. Please note it down. In general, the bactericidal drugs, they are preferred over the bacteriostatic. Then, next thing about the general principle, the time-tested drugs be preferred. Time-tested. I mean, those drugs, have, they have got good history behind, and they should be given. In spite of this, that a new drug is um, administered. And another important general principle, you have to weigh the benefits of the medicine versus the toxicity. Benefits of the medicine versus the toxicity is something very important. You have to weigh the benefits of the medicine versus toxicity. I mean, these are the few general principles you will observe before going through <coughs> the treatment. And then about the penicillins, uh, it is a few words about the history before going to the next slides. Penicillins, you know, well-known name behind that is that of Fleming. Alexander Fleming, and the date written is around 28, 1928. He born around, he born in year 1888 and died in 1955. So he was a captain, medical officer. So he found this, that uh, he was a microbiologist. He found that some bacteria in one of his uh, those uh, specimens they were lysed. They were broken on by a fungus, common fungus, a green fungus. So the name of that fungus, you know, the Penicillium notatum. Penicillium, name of the fungus. So he found that it's some juice produced by this fungus. So it was known as mold, mold juice, mold, M-O-U-L-D, mold juice. So it can kill the bacteria. So he was interested to treat people. I mean, people were injured. He fought First World War, you know, that complete unity. So he started working on this penicillin juice, and this small juice, and uh, so was successful to treat wounds, war wounds, and even other uh, such problems. So, in 28, so he discovered it. Later on, other people work on it. I'll show you the slides. And those medicines, these were assessed biologically. These medicines were assessed biologically. Bi they were bioacid, not on bioacid. And those substances which, uh, which are bioacid, they are usually given in case of, uh, in terms of 
international units in terms of international unit IU. Say vitamin A, vitamin D, number of other enzymes, they are there. So international unit. So there is one equivalence between this. So after that, I show you also the slide about the uh, uh, history of it, learning object. When to give this medicine and is that effective? Is it a drug of choice? Over here, penicillin G is a prototype, not down prototype. In certain other condition, another penicillin. So this this penicillin, this penicillin at that time the penicillin. They were named at the first penicillin that was named as the penicillin G. Penicillin G. It is polar and not acid stable. Then they made penicillin which was acid stable like that penicillin V and so many other. Then semi-synthetic penicillin made then synthetic so in the advancement of uh, science so the better drugs were produced so says 50 60 years back this penicillin was very widely used and it was combined with another group of antibiotics known as aminoglycosides aminoglycosides so they have synergistic effect penicillins penicillins the first one the penicillin g it has other name like the penicillin also known as benzyl penicillin note on benzyl penicillin also known as granular penicillin granular penicillin so what are, what are these penicillin g penicillin v and penicillin k I mean, these are the fermentation products, just note on, fermentation products. So I also remember, I had gone through some literature that penicillin, there was a place in Miawali or somewhere in Dira Smail Khan. There was one colony where it was produced from one fungus, also penicillium, I'll show you the name. So the name of the area was penicillin colony, penicillin colony. So we now come to the other slideshow. I'll tell you different things. These slides are very nicely arranged by your assistant professor, Dr. Pracha. Let us go to the second one. Here, the learning objectives. So what you are supposed to know about it at the end of completion of this, what is the nature of that penicillin? How they, how they are classified. They are classified by different ways. Chemical, based on the chemical structure. You know the chemical structure of penicillin. It is, a, I'll show you also, 6 amino penicillinic acid. 6 amino, not down please, 6 amino penicillinic acid. Certain changes are brought in the periphery of that structure to make it more stable or acid stable or to make it long acting like that. Then classification may be, may be based on the uh, bacterial spectrum, antibacterial spectrum to what um, bacteria, uh, which of the penicillin is effective, or is it narrow spectrum, or is it wide spectrum, or it is extended uh, spectrum. Then they are also classified, these penicillins, uh, while based on the penicillin days uh, sensitivity. Mind it, number of bacteria, they start not to be killed by the penicillin and they start producing enzymes. Over here, one enzyme is penicillin days. 
and uh, this penicillin A is produced by certain bacteria and uh, they break down the uh, structure, basic structure, well known ring over there, note down, it is beta lactam ring, beta lactam ring. And other enzyme produced by some other bacteria that is known as amidase, note down please. Amidase, A-M-I, amidase. So that breaks down a one, there is one side chain in that basic structure I show you. So again the antimicrobial activity that vanishes. Next, you sh uh, important thing, a student should know how the <coughs> penicillins they act. Penicillins are very effective if there are no contraindications. They are they act on the cell wall, and then um, the protein in the uh, <coughs> cell, in the cytoplasmic uh, membrane. There are specific proteins which bind this penicillin. Penicillin binding proteins mechanism of action. So how they act, the, how the, it is the formation of the cell wall which is interfered and how the cell wall is formed, I'll, it will be given later on. Another important thing, resistance, while listening to the uh, lecture over the professor um, <clears throat> Shasab, so there he has also given beautifully how resistant we are to the uh, penicillins. So number of uh, different ways are number one you have been told that uh, penicillin A is produced, amidase is produced, then there may be no penetration. I mean the, the bacteria they, they produce this, uh, I mean they become resistant so the drug cannot pass through. Another way the drug is thrown out, efflux, that is known as efflux, we will show in the next slides, efflux. Another thing, how the resistance that develops uh, to the penicillin, that is uh, changes at the penicillin binding proteins, change in the shape of the penicillin binding. Then spectrum of activity which of the bacteria they are being killed by it. You know the penicillin, they are bactericidal and if there are no contraindication, they are very effective. Clinical uses, because they are well tested penicillin, number of penicillins that they are not only one. So they are widely studied and used at a number of places alone or in combination with other antibiotics. Then toxicity is very important. You have been told that may be some allergic reaction, may be mild toxicity may be there, or there may be a major effect like uh, anaphylactic shock. And in case of the antibiotic, there may be pseudomembranous colitis with one of the penicillins. Then at the end, written over here, just name the lactamase inhibitors. Because the certain bacteria, Staphylococcus, Staphylococci, they were producing uh, the enzymes. So the enzyme production, sub substances added to the penicillin, which inhibit the enzyme production by those bacteria to protect the structure. Then we come to the next picture. Introduction about history wise again one of the oldest uh, substances used as antibiotics and uh, they are obtained from penicillium. Over here is penicillium mold and <coughs> mold juice. And the older name at that time was mold juice. So penicillium they are different uh, penicillin the original one was penicillium notatum. Other penicillin are also there from where this penicillin was obtained by natural way. That was a lengthy way and very expensive at that time. Here is one penicillium chrysogenum. Penicillium chrysogenum. 
widely used even in Pakistan from it penicillin was prepared. Then number of other antibiotics they are there. Now it's a comparison what should be given because of the resistance that is developing due to the misuse of the antibiotics or inappropriate use. Here is the Fleming one. Is the time of the discovery of this uh, penicillin juice, the penicillium notatum in 1928. On right side it is written penicillin G. It's one injection which used to be available in power. It is prepared by this one company Pfizer that is still here. And on right side below it is the basic structure. You are asked about this basic structure in exam to give you good marks. Just concentrate on it. The name of the basic structure it is 6 amino penicillinic acid. 6 amino penicillinic acid. On right side here you see it is a 5 member ring with sulfur. So it is known as thiazolidine. Thiazolidine. Thia. What is thia? Note down. Thia. What is thia, please? All, all of you. It is the sulfur, thiazolidine. And then on left side is the four member ring that is known as beta lactam ring and at position where NH is attached to it, it is known as position 6. Please note down. On left side there is one R. In the beta lactam ring, these lactamases and in case of uh, another name for that is penicillinases, enzymes produced by bacteria, they break the beta lactam ring. So the antimicrobial activity. Some of the bacteria, they produce another enzyme, previously told, amidase, A-M-I, amidase. So the R is detached from the structure and again the antimicrobial activity, that is, and that vanishes. Here, brief history, 1928, Fleming, he discovered it and got uh, Nobel Prize 19... Uh, 45, uh, he was Scottish from Scotland. Listen. Then in 1940, another worker is Flora from, uh, from French. He is French, Flora Morphe, French. And his team of researchers, they, they had shown the in vivo activity, the bactericidal effect of it. For, Glory. He also got, I think, if not, not. Then 1942, the, these patients of the Second World War, they were treated with it. In 1945, there is one Hodgkin. Hodgkin. He determined the chemical structure. I mean, who determined the chemical structure? He also got this uh, <coughs> Nobel Prize, the Dorothy Hodgkin. Noble by God, the Nobel. He determined the structure. Next. Chemistry again, it is repetition just like a news given by your <coughs> television channels. They start the one news in the morning and com uh, in, uh, complete it in the evening by rotating that pictures up and down and from left to right, right to left like that and the same picture. So it, it, you have already been told about here. Here my days is shown in the picture. Then thiazolidine, this you have been told about it. Basic structure is six minus. If the basic structure is broken at beta at the lactam ring, if the basic structure, so what is formed that is penicilloic acid, not all, penicilloic acid. That may produce allergic reaction. Penicilloic acid that may be allergic, produce allergic reaction. 
here it is a lot to give you better picture than next Hydrolysis is there, beta lactam ring is be, being broken on right side. It is beautifully uh, been shown that how the penicilloic acid is formed. It is hydrolysis. Then penicillin is converting to metabolite penicilloic acid. Penicillin, you know, it's polar and uh, as such, it is. Uh, uh, it passes through GFR, excreted through GFR, and then secreted. Its secretion is very important, so the main amount that goes into urine. Some of the penicillin they are excreted by bile, while the others go into enterohepatic circulation, like ampicillin, and there is one nephcillin that is excreted by bile. It is uh, almost the same picture and uh, you have to try it better to get outstanding mass. Application different ways you have order dependent. Penicillin G is among the natural, it's different names you have been given than made penicillin V. This was effective for this was effective orally and uh, for minor infections of upper respiratory tract. Then synthetic or semi-synthetic. Here you see, to, as the penicillin, they have very short half-life, say half to one hour, to make it long-acting. So here the salts you see among the synthetic, maybe. To the penicillin G, further medicine, they were combined, written over here, like broken penicillin, broken penicillin. They used to be, penicillin G was used to be a drug of choice for gonococcal infections. So procaine was added, so the effect could remain for 12 hours or 24 hours. Then benzathene, why they were added to make the penicillin G longer thing. So benzathene is once given, so maybe effective for two to three, uh, one, two to three weeks rather. So very helpful in case of uh, this syphilis, primary and secondary syphilis. Then among these preparations, ampicillin still in white practice alone or in combination. Some people they say they are allergic to ampicillin and ampicillin diarrhea is a problem or uh, given for a longer period. Resistance develops, super added infection may be there. So maybe I haven't told that there may be colitis, pseudomembranes related to Ampicillin, there is one long acting amoxicillin. You know, when you give these medicines, they are bound to food proteins. So, right on, you have to give these medicines with one or two hours uh, away from the food, food taking, either earlier or after that. Amoxicillin, it is known for its amoxicillin, is known for its bi good bioavailability. I said not to. It doesn't bond, it is not bound to the uh, food proteins. So next one is the methicillin. It has special indication, methicillin, methicillin. Well known word, you will study it later on, methicillin resistant, methicillin sensitive bacteria, uh, you will come across it. This one is also given a special indication because it is a nephrotoxic. Then nephcillin, also it has got nephcillin, it is sodium source. Sodium, it is attached to <clears throat> the R position in the basic structure. Nephcillin, it also has specific indication and specific toxicity like neutropenia. Then ticarcillin, these are according to the... Then according to the structure, <clears throat> Minopenicillins, you have to write all these medicines again and again so that they remain there in your... These ampicillin very common in combination with other substances which inhibit the uh, penicillinase or lactamase or cephalosporinase. A certain drugs are there. They are given in combination in minopenicillin, ampicillin and remoxy. Below that, there is a specific group. 
isoxazolic penicillin, isoxazolic penicillin. They are oxacillin, coloxacin, dicloxacin. Whenever there is question, a teacher must ask, classify on this basis. Over here is chemical cell, based on chemical structure. Carboxypenicillins. Carboxypenicillin is the next one specific indication said in case of pseudomonas, carbenicillin, ticarcillin, and then uridopenicillin, mesloselin, azelocillin, and piperacillin. You have to write them and again and again so they let them stay in your mind. It's really very volatile subject and difficult. Then after that, according to the <coughs> bacterial spectrum, according to the bacterial spectrum, here staphylococci, I mean those which are particularly important again, the staphylococci, methacillin, oxacillin, cloxacillin, flucloxacillin, nepsilin, staphylococci, it's very important staphylococci. You might have seen this abbreviation MRSA, methacillin, um, MRSA, methacillin resistant staphylococcus, staphylococcus aureus like that. Then specific, these are viva question, anti-pseudomonal, they, they are effective against pseudomonas. So these are few, not only this, these penicillins are effective, there are a number of other drugs which are given from drug groups, they are given for pseudomonas, it's viva question, please go through it, I was asking and the students were not responding in the previous exam. So what are the specific drugs for pseudomonas? Over here, these are the mesloselin, azelocelin, and ticorcelin. Very important, pseudomonas. Then the broad spectrum, ampicillin, amoxicillin, and bacampicillin, bacampicillin. Here is again one classification the based on the penicillinase sensitivity. I mean, their structure is broken down by penicillinase, other name for it is lactamase, note down please. Penicillinase, lactamase. Here which are sensitive, they are penicillin G, penicillin V, ampicillin, amoxicillin, piperacillin, ticorcillin. I mean, those which are resistant to the penicillinase, even if the penicillinase that is produced by bacteria, I mean, the structure remains in touch and their effectiveness is there. Methicillin, oxacillin, cloxacillin, dicloxacillin, flucloxacillin, nephcillin. Then the kinetics, you have already been told, these are polar substances in general. So not well observed from oral root, not, um, they don't stay yeah, they much in body and they are excreted uh, as such almost from the kidneys by GFR and also secreted. Their secretion uh, at the time at the site of secretion it may be interfered like one very known drug you have already studied, probenicid. Note on what is the role of probenicid with such drugs. Most of the penicillin, the second line are inactivated by gastric acid. You have already been told that penicillin G was not acid stable, no, so not given orally. So given parentally. If there are no contraindication, you can give these drugs in big amount. Then penicillin V, third one, third line, the penicillin V, ampicillin, amoxicillin, carbenicillin, and diclacillin, they are acid stable. So effective orally. As concerned the absorption of oral penicillin, it is impaired by food and be given with an interval of one to two hours before or after meal. Nephcillin is highly plasma protein bound. Nephcillin. Next one is most penicillins are formulated as sodium potassium. So you have been told at position R or like that, uh, they are attached with sodium or potassium to make it um, stable. It's something important by a question, sort of the breath. Penicillin in general, they don't cross the blood-brain barrier, but when they, the BBB is inflamed, so these drugs 
they pass through with the barrier, blood brain barrier. Next, it is the same thing which already given on left side, as we say that is staphylococcal infect. The, those with extended spectrum then for pseudomonas on right side it in that uh, uh, the given intramuscular and there they pass unchained in the urine so very effective in urinary tract infection no doubt then pharmacokinetics again it is continuing excreted unchained urine from GFR and also secret, tubular secretion. Nephslin that goes into the bile and ampicillin undergoes enterohepatic circulation. You know that those drugs which are going into enterohepatic circulation, they have uh, better, I mean, uh, life, uh, prolonged life. Then oxacillin, cloxacillin, and dicloxacillin, uh, they, they go into the renal and biliary excretion. Half-life is short in general, so they are with 30 to 60 minutes. Benzathen and procaine penicillin, half-life is <clears throat> prolonged. It is from, say, 24 hours. In case of benzathen, two to three hours, you have been told. So the next of the slides will be discussed, inshallah, by Dr. Pracha and then as so for every topic there should be sufficient time and students should retain and that um, the students should remember that this topic was taught and it's also important important the students should also know by whom it was taught i can recall even after say 50 years <coughs> i mean what topic was taught by which of my teachers and what words were spoken by that teacher. So those teachers were better than, far better than us and their words remained in the, our mind. So uh, best of luck, it will be continued by Dr. Praja in the next one, inshallah. So she should have share of it because of arranging such a beautiful slides. Thank you very much.